Hi everyone, I'm Yang Yang. Welcome to Tea House, China Radio International's online video talk show. You can watch our program online at www.crienglish.com and also enjoy Tea House via iPad. To do so, click on CRI Video and then the teapot button down here to find our program. To download the application, search for CRI Video in the App Store. Today, we're having a cup of tea with Mr. Ira Cohen, the Executive Vice President of Universal Ideas. It's a management consulting company specializing in education and the training sectors. He will talk about how action learning helps a company to improve its performance. Ira Cohen is the recipient of the CCH Special Award for Outstanding Contribution to HR in China and Hong Kong. As Executive Vice President of Universal Ideas, he leads a management consultancy firm with a specialization in marketing, market research and business development strategies for training and trade initiatives. Currently, Ira is the Executive Director of the Robert H. Smith University of Maryland China programs. He's been working in China since 1985. Mr. Cohen is a thought leader in business-driven action learning, a bridge between Western and Asian management practices, and a proven administrator and decision maker in the Chinese business environment. In 2004, Ira became the first North American to be trained in China and receive a Chinese-issued helicopter private pilot's license, recognized worldwide. Hi, Aaron. Welcome to our program. Thanks, Yang Yang. It's great to be here. And today I prepared a special tea for you. It's Xi Hu Longjing. So it's from Zhejiang. Yes, Zhejiang province. Yeah, Longjing. I really like that tea. The first time I had that tea was in 1986 at Huangshan Mountain. Oh. What is action learning and how does it develop? Action learning is really interesting. First of all, uh, all the major companies in the world, Johnson & Johnson, Boeing, GE, DHL, L'Oreal, Eli Lilly, uh, all these companies have been using action learning for many years. And it was actually created starting around 1950, 1960, but really didn't become very popular around the world till around uh, the 1980s. Now, it was created by a man named Reg Revens, and he's a very interesting story. And how did you get involved in action learning? A professor from the university I was working with introduced me to a man named Yuri Boshik, and Yuri is one of the world's thought leaders on action learning, and he's written some books on business-driven action learning, which is one of the areas I focus on. There's five types of action learning, and business-driven action learning is one method, and it's really great. What are the elements of action learning? Well, for it to be real action learning, it has to have two key elements. One, there has to be a real challenge, and in this case, a business challenge. And number two, you also have to be developing the person and the people do solving the business challenge, developing their personal performance improvement as well. So it must have those two ingredients to be action learning. Otherwise, it might be quality circle or some other kind of intervention, some other kind of program. So again, it must have both a real challenge and also the people who are solving the challenge are also developing themselves at the same time. I noticed you prepared a board. Do you want to use that to explain it? I will. Let me first tell you about Reg Revens, the man who invented it, because he's a really interesting story. When he was a little boy, his mother took him to Florence Nightingale's funeral. His father was the chief inspector of the sinking of the Titanic. Around 1929, he studied physics in the University of Michigan and then returned to Cambridge, where he worked at the Cavendish Institute with five of the Nobel Prize winners in physics. And one of those five Nobel Prize winners he worked with was Einstein. And then he was a religious man uh, from the Quaker sect of Christianity who believe in asking questions to solve problems. And when he found out that some of his work might be used for 
putting the nuclear bomb together, he quit that project and started working for the Ministry of Coal, the largest employer in the world in the 1950s in the UK. And then over 30 years, he developed this formula, which I'll show you. So this is quite simple, but so is Einstein's formula E equals mc squared that many people know is very simple. But this is actually uh, the formula for human resource development. And if you see, L equals P plus Q plus R. So L equals learning. P is your program knowledge. Everything we know from high school, grade school, what we learn from our friends and our family, our culture, our government, that's our P, our knowledge. And then Q is inquiry or asking questions. And then later on, someone add, added R, which is reflection. So learning has to equal everything we know now, plus asking questions, inquiry, plus thinking about the answers that we just got. And then from those answers, that makes our P, hopefully, a little bit bigger, a little bit better. And what Reg Revan said was that learning has to be equal to or greater than the rate of change. So the rate of change in society can only change if the learning in society is equal to or greater than the rate of change. And how is action learning related to performance improvement? Let me give you an example. One of the challenges China has is there's 95 million people, or almost one out of every 13, has diabetes. And so one of the pharmaceutical companies that I work with brought over their country managers and uh, experts in the field of diabetes two summers ago and from all over the world they brought over maybe 16 or 18 specialists and we went to people's homes and hospitals and talked with people from the government and learned as much as we could about diabetes in China to help the government solve how to better manage and help the people with this disease to have their life a little bit easier. Then the benefit of this, of course, is the pharmaceutical companies, if they come up with some solutions, they also will make some money. But it's to help the, the people with the problem, help the government solve this kind of problem, and also help their business. And so that's the big picture of how action learning might work. OK, Ira, it's tea time. Let's have a cup of tea, and then we'll talk about more on the application of action learning. OK, great. Okay, welcome back to our program, Ira. Thank you. Just now, we talked about the concept of action learning. How can we apply this problem-solving method? Action learning can be applied to a really big challenge, such as I said earlier, solving diabetes for a whole country. Or it can be a smaller problem. Uh, for example, one hospital, we did an action learning project where we had five people and one of the people presented the problem. The problem was that the media and the policemen, when there was some famous person coming into the hospital, they would go into the operating room or they would go and look at the files and, uh, you know, they didn't know how to manage this. Uh, and so after this action learning session, they realized that, well, they have some policies and they can share and they communicated with each other. And also some people in the team of five people who were experiencing this action learning conversation had never talked before in the meetings very much and they found that this was really opening up people who were less communicative with uh, the other people they work with. How can we use action learning to better manage our time? Well, again, action learning is when you have a real business challenge. So if time management is your challenge, then you would use action learning and the art of asking questions. Now, Peter Drucker said, the leader of yesterday led by telling, but the leader of today leads by asking. So when I introduced this method and I introduced asking questions to some senior leaders of a very big company uh, worldwide, then they found that instead of answering all the questions for the people who were their managers, they would ask them questions 
and then that freed up their time. They weren't doing the other person's job. They only had to do their job and other people through questioning were able to do their job. So asking learning questions automatically frees up your time and puts the responsibility back on the team instead of you being the leader who tells people what to do, but you're the leader who asks people questions so they figure it out for themselves, they learn, and then they don't have to task you with their responsibilities in the future. Can you give us some examples? There was a manager from a, a famous company who had growing his company from 100 employees to 200 and some employees and a, a large business. People were coming to him asking him because before he was their manager and now he was promoted to being the, the big boss of that unit. And they were still coming to him as if he was the regional manager instead of the global manager. And when he started asking them questions, instead of giving them the answers, they realized that, that he wasn't going to be doing their job anymore. And so they stopped asking him questions and started uh, doing the work instead of having him do the work. And how can actual learning be used in education? In the United States, uh, there's a lady named Marilee Adams who's introducing uh, Enquire and Action Learning into the primary and high school systems in New Jersey, and it's really well accepted. I'm honored to also be the executive director of the University of Maryland China programs, and in our leadership EMBA program, we have action learning and coaching as part of the program. And so this program's starting up again in March of 2012, and if people want to an MBA degree that uses action learning to solve their lifelong challenges and business challenges, uh, that's really a great opportunity for them with the University of Maryland. Please give us some examples on how action learning helped a corporation to improve their performance. Okay, uh, when we did our, uh, my research in Guangzhou, there was a lady who represented her family's business and they have a food company. They had a problem with human resources that how to pay the old employees and the new employees fairly. And so they used action learning to talk about their problem and other people from other companies, uh, for other entrepreneurs, listen to the ladies' business challenge and then they came up with uh, some solutions on how to bridge the old employees and the labor relations, etc., with the new employees and motivate them and give them more responsibilities. Another fellow with a textile company in Dalian, uh, he also had similar HR challenges. Uh, some people have challenges in going to the banks. Some people have challenges with scheduling uh, operations. Uh, so action learning can't, in itself doesn't solve any problems, but the people who are asking the questions uh, for their companies or for their teams uh, they'll solve those challenges uh, with their teams. From my understanding that action learning can not only help the leaders in the company to improve their performances, but also can help the individuals in the corporation to improve their performance, right? Yeah, absolutely. And in daily life as an individual, how can they use this problem-solving method to improve their performances? You know, maybe we can look at a family situation where the parent wants the child to stop playing video games and study more. Instead of telling them, well, why don't you go study or do this or tell them, why not have a conversation that is asking, including the young person, and maybe include uh, some of their other cousins or friends as part of it. So make a game out of questioning and enjoy the experience. It may work, it may not work but it's better than telling the children what to do by asking them what they think about what they're doing and maybe what they think the future is and for them to learn on their own and from each other. So you can apply this to young children of almost any age, old people of almost any age, and in any situation. So it could be family, it could be government. I understand the Chinese government has used action learning to solve their challenges as well. So. It applies universally. The formula I showed you, it's a universal formula that holds true in every situation. Okay, thank you very much, Ira. Please enjoy a cup of tea. Thanks. And then we will talk about how action learning helps a company to improve its performance. Okay, 
great. Thank you very much. So most of the time you spend here is as a coach or as a really businessman? As a real businessman, yeah. I run the Universal Ideas and uh, also I'm the executive director of the University of Maryland EMBA program. And uh, that's been in China for about 10 years and we have a partnership with Jin Mao Dashui, UIB. It's a leadership EMBA program and it also includes action learning and coaching. Something that a lot of people don't know about me is that in 2003, I always had a dream that I wanted to fly a helicopter. So near Shisunling, there was a school for a few years, and so I learned how to fly a helicopter, eventually got my Chinese helicopter pilot's license, and I'm the only North American to have done that. So I really have a helicopter view of China and of doing business and of flying. And how often do you fly your helicopter? <laughs> Never enough, but at least uh, a few times a year. What's your helicopter view of China in doing business? I think the best story is really when I flew from Shisunling to Badaling and back. We shut down the, the helicopter, the rotors stopped turning around. The other pilot got out, Chinese pilot and myself. He looked over at me and said, uh, how did you like that experience? And I said, thank you very much. It was really a good experience. But inside, I was saying, wahoo, this was unbelievably great. I knew then that two things happened. I knew that if there was ever an emergency, I could contain my emotions and very much in the Asian Confucian way, control my emotions and savor that, hold on to it, like remembering a good cup of tea to recall and use that great feeling for the future. So flying a helicopter is safety, observing, using your whole body, using your eyes, your feet, your arms, keeping everything in perspective. So running a business is the same way. And you can't look back, you know, you don't have a rear view mirror in the helicopter. You can only look at your instruments and forward and keep everything in balance. And so running a business is the same way, looking ahead, using everything you have, all of your faculties, all of your senses and feelings and values, and moving forward and safely. From your experience and observation, having been doing business in China for about uh, 25 years, and what do you think are the major challenges Chinese market is facing? They talk about the war for talent, and there's a shortage of, of managers. I don't think there's a shortage of managers. I think there's a shortage of leaders and leadership. And the, the greatest challenge, uh, students get out of school and they can't find a job and parents and families want to make decisions. And I think the greatest challenge is that inquiry or asking learning questions in the family, in the school, in society, that will foster creativity and innovation. You can't have creativity and innovation without having the freedom to ask questions. And what are the limitations of action learning? I think the limitation is the freedom in the workplace to challenge your boss, the freedom in the workplace or to, in the school to challenge your teacher, the freedom at home to challenge your mother or father. I can share a story with you, if you like, of a very different society. Yes, please. There's a race of people as old as the Chinese people they're also 5,000 years or more history. And their children, uh, when they're three and a half to five years old, they teach them to ask four or five questions at a dinner table once a year about why are they different, why do they eat different food, why do they sit in a certain position. So by the time the children are three and a half to five years old, they learn to ask their teacher, their parents, the leader of their family, learning challenging questions. And this race of people, which of course it's the Jewish people, uh, they're only 0.02% of the population, but they have about 22% of the Nobel Prize winners in the world. The dramatic difference of their accomplishment and some of their challenges has been that 
their culture is based on from the formative years of asking questions, learning questions. So I really think that as societies and cultures learn the value of asking, teaching their children to learn by asking questions, that society will become more innovative, more creative, and uh, will be a very healthy society. And what are your suggestions to those businessmen who want to improve their performances in the business world? I think that the businessmen have to realize that the people they're working with, the people that report to them, are really capable and give them a chance to and be strong to let them evolve and reach their own potential. So I think we want everyone to reach their own potential and you do that by learning faster than the rate of change. So if your business is changing or the environment is changing, you can't do it on your own. You have to do it with a team of people and you have to give those people the empowerment to learn. And the empowerment to learn is the opportunity to ask questions, think about this, the answers, and then add back to the business or the society or the environment they're trying to solve their problems in, to learn. So they used to talk about, oh, we need to have a learning culture. And I challenge that and I say, I don't think a learning culture is as important as a culture of inquiry. So this is a little...